So that's exactly what happens is that the moment that we're out of the way, the moment we're not our body, the no longer we're not our identity, the no longer we're not our, the environment or putting our awareness on the external world, the brain tends to get more orderly and coherent. And different compartments of the brain begin to say, I, we can, he's selfless, he's not a self any longer, and so the, there's a coherence and orderliness and we start getting this synchronization that takes place in the brain. And what syncs together links together. And when you're stressed and in, insecure and emotional, that fragmented personality keeps a person powerless because it's like having a multiple personality disorder, but experiencing all the personalities at the same time. We've all been there. Meditation allows that kind of orderliness. And when the front starts talking to the back and the side start talking to the side, you start feeling more like yourself than you felt in a long time. And all of a sudden, all the things that you were stressing about no longer have any value any longer because you've taken your attention off them and the body settles down. Now that coherent and orderly signal from the brain sends a very coherent and orderly message down the central nervous system, which controls and coordinates all other systems. And all of a sudden the immune system says, wow, that's a great rhythm. All of a sudden there's a group of guys playing really great drums and every, the orchestra, the symphony now is playing in unison and the cells are getting a very organized symphonic message. And so the immune system starts making some really healthy white blood cells. The, the, the digestive system starts working its timing better and, the, and, and all of a sudden the heart is starting in harmonics with the brain and you start experiencing well-being. Mm -hmm. And so the moment you start experiencing well-being, you go from tissue breakdown, catabolism, degeneration, into a state of regeneration, anabolism, tissue repair. Even the brain cells start growing. Everything starts growing. Cortical thickness starts to happen. Cortisol levels drop. St uh, s uh, stress genes are dysregulated and down. They're shut off. They're dampered down. And all of a sudden, the body starts expressing a greater level of health. And now all of a sudden, you go from particle to wave. Mm -hmm. And the energy starts to move into the heart. And all of a sudden, we start seeing the uh, chakra centers lining up. And the person all of a sudden now starts having energy from the body as the mind, because that's where all of it starts. The body's freed from the chains of the past. And the moment that happens, the side effect is called joy. And that energy starts moving from the hormonal centers. In other words, if you're no longer a sexual identity, you're no longer digesting food, and you're no longer stressing and, and feeling out of balance, all those energy centers all of a sudden, does have, that energy has to go somewhere. So it starts to move into the heart. You start to fall in love in the moment. You want the moment to last. Your body is feeling enriched and all of a sudden the heart starts to open and the energy starts moving back to the brain and it's moving out of the body and you're generating a bigger field and all of a sudden you'll be able to focus on possibility because you're taking your attention off the particle and now you're focusing on the 99% of possibility that the atom is made of and you're beginning to select new ideas, new paradigms, new, um, new um, creative states. And so the forebrain starts to work in constructing new archetypes and new patterns, and you see the person moving into a creative state, and all of a sudden uh, they're, they're, a different, uh, they're a different state of uh, expression in their brain. But we have that, we have two aspects of our consciousness. You know, we have our subjective consciousness, that's the free will, willed entity called you and me that has a soul that's on a journey back to source that gets to like and dislike, gets to be happy, gets to be sad, gets to choose or not choose. It's a free will being. That is our subjective consciousness. That's this field around us that exists beyond space and time. It's, it can be measured, but it's an electromagnetic field. Then there is that objective consciousness that exists beyond space and time that is observing all of this into reality. And that objective consciousness is very sensitive to how we think and feel. Thoughts are electric and feelings are magnetic. And how you think and how you feel, called a state of being, broadcasts an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life. So if you're walking around every day frustrated and suffering, thinking and feeling that way, what you're saying to that objective consciousness as a subjective creator, okay, divine intelligence, giver of life, who endorses who I'm being, I'm expressing a certain level of suffering today. So now I'm creating suffering in my life, but bring it in a way that I least expect, that surprises me and leaves no doubt, 
that it's come from you so I can suffer more. So there, that's karma. Well, karma happens every day and because we're thinking and feeling in the same way, we keep creating the same external environment. We create that same external environment, we react in the same way of thinking and feeling. That same thinking and feeling then reinforces that same environment. And there's a tango between the outer world and the inner world and that's called karma. Break the addiction to the emotion, change your habituations of thought and actions, change your feelings that you've memorized and all of a sudden there is no karma. See, we're not punished for our sins, we're punished by our sins. So then the subjective consciousness, when it marries with or unifies with that objective consciousness, the only way it responds is through how we're being. So you don't, you don't pray for your prayers to be answered. You get up as if your prayers are already answered. That state of being is a level of energy that transforms every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out and the feeling draws the event to you. So if you're living in a state of gratitude, what you're saying is the event has already happened. And now if I start thinking about when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen, I just return back to the old self. The new self would never think mm -hmm. that way. So then the marriage of subjective consciousness, free willed you and I, with that objective consciousness who endorses how who we are, basically how we think and feel, is a loving intelligence and intelligent love. So then it has an electromagnetic frequency and when you emulate it as a creator, in other words, you can't create <clears throat> from a guilty, lacking, uh, <laughs> selfish person. That's not the qualities of the divine. If you are going to create, you better emulate the divine. And what are the qualities of the divine? A loving intelligence and intelligent love. It's got a will that's so much greater than our will. It has a mind that's so much greater than our mind. It's got a love for life that's so much greater than our love for life. It is a consciousness. It's an awareness. It's observant of who we are. So then it has, it has one rule. I honor free will and I will endorse who you're being. So then when you and I connect to that intelligence by changing how we think and feel. What is the greatest ideal of ourselves? And when you move into that elegant state of being and you're in the present moment and you're feeling empowered and divine and enriched and enthusiastic and now it's time to create. When you create from that state of being, you're emulating the observer. And what you're saying is, observer, take a look at what I'm observing. I'm being like, I'm emu emulating you. Mm -hmm. So now, I'm looking, you're looking down the telescope, I'm the, the lens of the telescope, and let's magnify that into our life. When that alignment takes place, then, and you feel connected to something greater, you would never try to force the outcome.